Hello and welcome to Honors Function. This is the first of three lectures about graph transformations, one of the very important topics that will reappear in all subsequent units this year. To describe it summarily, this topic is about understanding how some specific changes in a function will affect its domain or range, its inputs or outputs, and its graph. All the transformation in the expression of the functions we will consider have a very precise geometrical correspondence. Let's begin with some examples. So in the first example, we are told that the function called f contains upon 1, negative 4, 2, 0, and 3, 5. From this function, we define another one called g. g of x is f of x minus 2. And we are asked to find three points on the graph of the function g. The first thing I want to do is to quickly plot the three points on the graph of f. Let me do that quickly. Okay, here we are, three points on the graph of f. So how can we find some points on the graph of g? Well, let's see. We have that g of x is f of x minus 2. We also know that f of 1 is negative 4, f of 2 is 0, and f of 3 is 5, right? This is what's given to us. So if my input is 1, 2, or 3, I will know the output of f. And so I want x minus 2 to be equal to 1, 2, or 3. So let's see. If x minus 2 is equal to 1, right, f of 1 is negative 4. So what does it mean about x? That would mean that x is equal to 3, right? So look, what is g of 3? g of 3 is f of 3 minus 2, right, f of x minus 2, which is equal to 1, which is negative 4. So we do have a point on the graph of g. It is 3, negative 4. Next one. If x minus 2 is equal to 2, which means x equal to 4, then f of 2 is 0, so g of 4 is 0. Check it out. What is g of 4? g of 4 is f of 4 minus 2, which is f of 2, and we know that's 0. So we have a second point on the graph of g, and this point is a point 4, 0. Well, as for the last point, by now you may have guessed how it works. Let's check out g of 5. g of 5 is f of 5 minus 2. 5 minus 2 is 3, and f of 3 is 5. And so the last point is 5, 5. So let's see what's going on here on these three points. So the point 1, negative 4 went to 3, negative 4, right here. The point 2, 0 went to 4, 0. And the point 3, 5 went to 5, 5. So the points have moved two units to the right. Two units to the right when I have an x minus 2 in my expression. Okay? Please do the next question in the same first example about f of x plus 5. Okay? Find three points on the graph of g. Let me do example number two. So in example number two, I'm taking the same three points in the same name of the function f, and now I want to find three points on the function g when g of x is equal to f of x minus 2. So again, let me quickly start with plotting the three points. This plotting is not necessary, but it just adds a visual element to the reasoning, okay? So, again, we know that f of 1 is negative 4, we know that f of 2 is 0, and we know that f of 3 is 5. 
and now let's figure out some points on the graph of g so in this case what would g of 1 be well g of 1 would be the same as f of 1 minus 2 what is f of 1 it is negative 4 right so it is negative 4 minus 2 which is negative 6 and so we have the point 1 negative 6 here let's plot it 1 negative 6 right here okay what is g of 2 here g of 2 is f of 2 minus 2 f of 2 is 0 0 minus 2 is negative 2 and so we have the point 2 negative 2 so 2 negative 2 right here and I'll let you verify that the last one would be g of 3 and g of 3 would be 5 minus 2 3 and so the point right here would be 3 3 so 3 3 right here and so in this case what happens is the point went down two units so down two units when the expression is f of x minus 2 now if we look at this right here we see this minus 2 is affecting the f of x it's affecting the output of f while in the previous example the minus 2 was affecting the input right you are affecting the x before you take f of x okay so this is going to be a very important distinction what are you changing the input or the output okay please do the second part of example number two let me move on to example number three okay so now i've changed my points for a reason that will be clear when i will look at the transformation uh, I just needed some even number on the input you will see why okay it doesn't have to be like that it's just simpler to deal with in this case I want to know what g of x equals f of x divided by 2 will do to these three points right here so here again let's quickly sketch what's going on Okay, here we go. We got the point 2, negative 4, 4, 0, and 6, 10. So what do we know about f? We know that f of 2 is negative 4. We know that f of 4 is 0. And we know that f of 6 is 10. And we want to find some points on the graph of g. Okay, now, what do I need inside right here? g of x is f of x over 2. This time, I want x over 2 to be equal to 2, 4, and 6, right? I want x over 2 to be equal to 2, 4, and 6. So that means that x has to be equal to 4, 8, and 12, right? Check it out. Look, what is, for example, g of 4? Well, g of 4 is f of 4 divided by 2, which is f of 2, which is negative 4. So g of 4 is negative 4. So uh, I need here, I'm going to g of 4 equals negative 4. So this point goes right here. Let's check out the next one. What is g of 8? g of 8 is f of 8 divided by 2, which is f of 4. And f of 4 is 0. So we have the point 8, 0. So 8, 0, I didn't put enough tick mark. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12. So 8, 0, 8, 0, right here. Okay, so this point went there. And finally, the last one would be g of 12. And g of 12 is the same as f of 6. And f of 6 is 10. So you need to go the 12 to find 10 so this was 8 9 10 11 12 right here and right there so the first thing that we notice right here in comparison to the other one is the move to the right it seems like it's a move to the right is not by a constant number right uh, this distance right here is obviously smaller than this one which is smaller than this one right what you have to see is it looks like it doesn't look like it actually what happened is all my x's got stretched by 2. 2 went to 4, 4 went to 8, 6 went to 12, right? So when you took at this distance right here, which is 2 on the x, you multiply by 2. This distance right here, 4 
it's an x length, right? This was an x length right here. 4 got multiplied by 2, now it's 8. And this distance right here, which was 6, it got multiplied by 2, and now it's 12, okay? And if you had, if I had given you another point like this, somewhere there, it doesn't matter where actually, how would you find the point on the graph of G, if this is a point on the graph of F, you would take that distance right here, and you would multiply by 2. Okay, and the point would be right here. This is for f of x over 2. So please, do the next part of this example. Let me move on to example number 4. Okay, now the 1 half is no longer acting on the x, but it's acting on the f of x in this example. So again, let's quickly make a plot of what's going on. All right, here we go. So this time, let's take these input inside G directly. What is G of 2? Why these input directly? Because I'm not affecting the input, right? G of 2 is 1 half of F of 2. F of 2 is negative 4, so it is 1 half of negative 4, which is negative 2. What is G of 4? G of 4 is 1 half of F of 4 f of 4 is 0, 1 half of 0 is 0, and finally, what is g of 6? 1 half of f of 6, f of 6 is 10, 1 half of 10 is 5. Let's plot these points. We have the points 2, negative 2, the points 4, 0, still on top of this one, and the points 6, 5, 6, 5, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, right here, okay? so. What happened right here when you multiply the output by one half? What we see is this original y length, right? This is a y length, got divided in two. This y length was zero, dividing in two doesn't change, and this original y length of 10 got divided in half, right? So let's keep on going with the next example. Okay, what's going on here? First of all, I've already uh, plotted my points, okay, in this case. Okay, g of x is f of negative x. So what do we want? We, let me write it here. g of x equals f of negative x. And we know that f of 2 is negative 4, f of 4 is 0, and f of 6 is, negative, is 10. So we want negative x to be equal to, negative x should be equal to 2, 4, and 6 for us to be able to figure out the output of g, right? Because these are the inputs of f. Okay. So that means x has to be equal to negative 2, negative 4, and negative 6. Check it out. What is g of negative 2? Well, it's the same as f of the opposite of negative 2, f of 2, and that is negative 4. So we have the point negative 2, 4. So negative 2, 4, right here, right? So it's a, basically it's a mirror image right here. What is g of negative 4? It's the same as f of 4, and f of 4 is 0, and so we have the point negative 4, 0, right here. And the other one would be right on the other side at 6, or so 4, 5, 6, right here, right there, right here, okay? Right on the other side. Please make sure you complete all the second part of the first five examples. It should be pretty straightforward. It's a copy of what I did in the first part. Let's now go over the first set of results. So to state the result, I will consider a function that I called f. I will consider a point uv on the function, so that means that f of u is v, and I will also consider a domain, ab, and a range, cd, okay? So you're going to have to be able to transform the graph of the function, a point on the function, the domain of a function, and the range of a function, okay? Let's now go over the results. I am not going to read all of the results right here. But basically, in the first three rows, I'm looking at what happens when you affect the input of a function. In the second three rows, I'm only affecting the output of the function. And they're all very symmetrical, right? Here, you're adding or subtracting something to the x. Here, you're adding or subtracting something to the 
f of x to the y's. Here you are multiplying x by something, and in the second one you are multiplying the y by something. And finally, if you put a negative sign in front of x right here, we're going to put a negative sign in front of y right here. Okay, so three transformation on the x, three transformation on the y. Here's our name. Okay, you have the name of all the transformations. So of course, when it's about the x, I will say horizontal, and when it's about the y, I will say vertical. As you saw previously, a transformation about x does not affect the y right here, right? So the range is in the y, and you see the y doesn't get affected. The domain, on the other hand, will get affected, and the x coordinate of the point will get affected by an x transformation. If you look at what's going on for the y, let's check out this one right here. My domain does not get affected by it because it only changes the y. And my x coordinate of the point does not get affected, but my range will and my y coordinate will. Okay? Finally, I'm not going to go over the detail of the table. Basically, it generalizes what we covered in the example. Finally, what I will say is that everything about x is counterintuitive. Okay? If you see x plus 2, you would like to add 2 to the x and move right, but actually you have to move left. If you see 2 times x, you would like to multiply the x by 2, but actually you're going to have to divide them by 2 and it would be a compression, not a dilation, okay? While everything on the y is intuitive, not counterintuitive, what you see is what you do. f of x plus 5, you go 5 up. 3 times f of x, it's a vertical dilation by a factor of 3. You multiply all your y length by 3. Let's now go over the last series of examples to conclude this first lecture. Okay, so in this case, I have a function, y equals f of x. I have a point on the function, negative 4, 3. I have a domain of the function, which is negative 2, 5. And I have the range of the function, which is 1, 9. And I'm considering the transformation f of x plus 4. Now, um, in the subsequent lecture, we're going to do all transformations. This is just one of them, okay? That's, that's all, it's just one. So let's see, f of x goes to f of x plus 4. So if you look at the table above, you will see that the point negative 4, 3 goes to, so x plus 4, you want to add 4, right? And that would make you move right, but it's counterintuitive. You have to move left, so you subtract 4. So negative 4 minus 4 right here and 3. So it goes to negative 8, 3. The domain, well, this is the x, right? So the domain will change completely. It's going to be negative 2 minus 4, and then it's going to be 5 minus 4 for the domain right here. And so this is negative 6, 1 for the domain. And the range, well, that does not get affected by this transformation. Oops, bracket right here, okay? So this is what happens to a point, a domain, and a range when you consider this transformation. Please do number seven. Let me now do a transformation on the graph, and we'll finish right here. Okay, so this is a graph of a function that I call f of x, and I want to graph this function right here. So basically, I want to graph 2 times f of x plus 3 minus 3. All right, so please have uh, several colors available. Actually, you will need one, two, and three colors available, okay? So the first transformation would be the x plus three. So again, you see three plus three would make you wanna move right, but you're gonna move left. So you're gonna take all the points and move them left three units. One, two, three, right here. One, two, three, right here. This point, one, two, three, right here. See the shape right here? Here we go. This point 1, 2, 3 right here and finally 1, 2, 3 right here. So here's, this is the graph of, in green I have y equals f of x plus 3. Alright, next we multiply the output by 2. So every y length will get multiplied by 2. This is a y length right here, it's equal to 5. That's a y length equal to negative 3. That's another y length negative 3. That's a y length equal to uh, 6. And finally, that's a y length equal to 
negative 9. So let's multiply them by 2. So 5 goes to 10, and you see I don't move my x, it's still x equals 5. Negative 3 goes to negative 6, negative 3 goes to negative 6, so you see it's a stretch. Uh, oh, and this one right here, I'm going to take this one, it's 0, right? So it doesn't move, so I have to go through this point right here. Uh, I don't like the word stretch, I use the word dilation, okay? This is a more precise word in math, dilation. 6 goes to 12 right here, okay? And again, I'm going to make sure I go through this point right here. Here we go. And finally, the last one. Oh, well, I don't have enough room, I guess. Negative uh, 9 goes to negative 18, so maybe, uh, maybe like that negative 18 right here. So let me keep track of it. 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10. This is negative 10 and negative 18. I didn't have enough room right here to do it. So now for the last one, minus 3. It's again on the y. So you take all your y and you move them down by 3 units. This point goes right here. This point goes right here. 1, 2, 3. 1, 2, 3 right here. 1, 2, 3 right here. So here we go. It would be like this, like this like this, and this point, of course, is going to be way outside. It goes down three units right here, okay? All right, that's the first introductory lecture to graph transformation. Thank you for watching.